Hi, I'm Keith Whitelock and welcome to Watercolor Workshop. Usually when I paint boats, they're out on the water, but I recently ran across one high and dry up on a farm. It was surrounded by dark green foliage, the sun was coming off of it and it just kind of popped, and I thought it would make a great subject. And it's a good example of negative space. Usually, of course, we see positive space images, which are rather like silhouettes. I hope you enjoy the demo. Now then, before I begin painting, as always, I'll do a detailed pencil sketch. This outlines just where I want most of the details, the trees, and these nice areas behind the boat will be dark green, and they'll really make that boat pop out at us. Now I've taken the sketch and transferred it to the watercolor paper. I have very lightly traced just the essentials onto the paper. So at this point I'm ready to begin. And where you start, again that's a point of personal preference, but because this subject is negative space, which is a nice white spot in the middle, I'm going to surround the boat first. I'll save the boat painting for a little bit later. So just to establish the shape of the boat, we'll paint some nice dark, rich, viridian type green around the boat. This will really make it jump out at the viewer. Green is a tricky color. I tend to mix most of my greens from scratch and they tend to be made from yellow ochre or a brighter yellow and dark blues like phthalo blue, Prussian blue with the addition of a little brown. And the kind of brown you use will determine just how nice and bright a green you get. I use burnt umber, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is an interesting color. Burnt sienna is actually a brown, but it is a yellow brown. And speaking of yellow, I've taken a little yellow ochre. You can use raw sienna. That's very similar to yellow ochre. And I'm going to use that for more of a I'll call it a sunlit, kind of a grass shade. Now I'll go back to the palette and I'll mix up more, more brown, more blue. Sometimes as a shortcut, I will use a phthalo green. There are lots of tubed greens, and I use them as a starter green. I really have to add something to them because they just look too artificial. They just don't look natural enough. And this really helps block in this weed area. Since this painting doesn't feature a sky, you'll notice I've moved away from the traditional wet into wet passage. We just want this boat to jump right out at us. Now we're going to have a very dark area in here. I'll refer to this sketch. We want this area behind the boat nice and dark. There'll be some tree limbs. We'll scratch some of those in. And the rest of this is going to be a nice busy jumble of textures and color shades. Now I'll angle the painting a little so I can cut in around this hull. I think this is where you get some of the most mileage out of a nice flat brush. This is a three-quarter inch 
flat brush. You could use a half inch brush or something like that. You just end up having to make a few more passages to get the coverage. And since we just want the illusion of all this darkness back here, we do not have to get bogged down with any any really definite shapes just yet. Now would be a fun time to do a little wet into wet. I'm going to use a little sepia, which is a very dark, almost black brown. And we'll indicate some tree trunks in a very abstract, just suggested way. We can also add some green into this, wet into wet, and just let it just very naturally blend around. And as dark as this looks right now, as it dries, it's going to lighten quite a bit. In some places it might lighten to the point where you're going to wonder where all the color went. This is also a good opportunity to do a little scraping. And again, I'm going to take this the end of a nice shiny stainless object. And I'm going to just indicate as per the drawing some tree limbs and if that's not wide enough the same brush I was just using happens to have a nice scraper end and we'll just Put in a few shapes and we'll let that dry down. This area under the boat has gone through a good bit of drying so I can actually go back in and throw in some more weeds and grasses down here at the bottom. I'll want a little more of a bluish Viridian for this grass right behind the boat because that's going to be in the shadow. And I will switch to a detail brush so we can kind of pick around that. And again, it's good to load the brush up and leaving it to work in a dry sort of way. We can just flip it up and let those bristles paint in a nice batch of weeds for us. Okay, now the paper has dried down and we can begin again. Sometimes that's a, a problem with watercolor and I keep a little portable hair dryer handy for that and now it's time to mix up a little light blue this is quite literally a sky blue and it makes a great shadow color for white objects in the color family blue colors are considered cool and even though it's a little cliche it's really nice to put blue a cool color in the shadows. It really artistically works. And here I'm using a flat brush again. I could have used a round brush for this job. That would have worked just as well. But this one covers a lot of territory.
unfortunately with watercolor as opposed to oils you know you have a lot of time with oil paints it takes days to get the stuff to dry watercolor everything dries so quick that sometimes you do have a little bit of a race against the clock I'll switch to a round brush now this brush is a number four and sometimes I like to point the brush right out here on the outside of the paper this is always a good handy spot outside of the intended image to to point your brush and, and check and see if the colors are just what you want and now I can start painting in little shadows and I will reach a spot here where I have the issue of, of drying down again and as small as this little area is that's almost where I am and if you do get a little impatient however you can do a little wet into wet detailing on the hull itself this old boat's got a lot of nice peeling paint and I'm going to Rinse down the brush, put just a little clear water. On this side. And using a little yellow ochre and maybe just a touch of burnt sienna. I'll put the first of my old rusty streaks in into that little bit of wet and let them creep. Who knows, this boat might never get back into the water again. I think some of them are intended to go back to work, but they've got a bad tendency after sitting up on the stands for a while to dry out and once the fresh water gets working on the boat they just get to a state where they're just rotted out or repair is just impractical and I'll also mix up a little cadmium red and a little burnt sienna for the bottom that old red lead bottom paint And we'll just let that creep around in that particular spot. On the shadow side of the boat, that old red paint's going to show up a little darker. And we'll just paint that area in. And while I'm at it, I think that could use a little, a little weathering as well. These poor old wooden boats really do take a beating. Chesapeake Bay can be a pretty rough customer sometimes. Now that we've let that dry down a little bit, you can really see how this shadow makes this boat pop out at us. And it's going to help a whole lot to get back in and actually put something in the windows to try to make things look a little transparent. So I'm going to take a little bit of that greenish foliage color that we had a few minutes ago and start applying that to those places where the windows are. And the whole inside of the boat is going to be really nice and dark. And we've also got this really nice dark underneath of the boat to deal with. While I'm at it with the nice transparent passages, we want to paint in the parts of the weeds that we can just barely see under the boat.
try to finish that off. At this point I've switched to a, a very small flat brush. It's about a quarter of an inch wide. Now I've mixed up a little phthalo blue and a little of that sepia for painting the interior parts of the cabin. And even though they look nice and dark, they will dry down a lot lighter. We'll mix in even darker sepia and carry this down to the floor part. And while I'm at it, I'll lighten that same color just a little and try to perk up a couple of the little structural details around the engine box and the cabin itself. The contrast between the light and the dark is what really, really tends to make things pop. So sometimes we will have to go back and hit one or two of these little areas for a second time until we're really satisfied with them. And we'll come back a little later and put some peeling paint on. The next step is to get the boards at the very bottom of the boat painted in and because it was that red bottom paint we'll take some sienna, burnt sienna and a little darker red and we'll pick up right where the bottom boards are visible. Most of the time when you go to a boat yard today, when you see a boat like this propped up for maintenance, it's sitting on nice stands, commercial stands. It's funny, years ago they used to be propped up on old 55-gallon drums. Now I've taken this round brush and I've added a little of this same light blue that we used for the uh, shadows. We'll just drag a couple of pieces of that to indicate old peeling paint. Maybe even just a couple of little hairlines to indicate separations of planks. And I want just a little more of a shadow on that door frame. And that pretty much gets the bulk of the boat ready to go. Turn it around so I can get this little angle on the bottom. Throw in a couple of planks. And while I'm here, we'll just go ahead and put a name on this boat. Of course, that's always a fun thing to take note of at a boatyard, all the interesting names. I 
And actually, this is not the name of the old boat that inspired the painting. But I found this name on another boat. And I just thought it was very neat to use. Maybe just a couple more little rust streaks on this guy. This time we'll make the rust a little a little more red than it was in that initial wash. And we'll also drag a little of this dry brush over the paint, make it look nice and weathered. And that takes care of the bulk of our boat. Now as we pull away from the boat and you get to see how it sits here in this uh, little landscape, I want to put in a lot of indicated details. And there are a lot of options about how to do this. And there's not any one particular thing that'll, that'll do the job. I've got a variety of brushes here. I have two different fan brushes. I have the grass comb brush with the little bristles missing from it. We can put that to work. And I can use just a good old standard flat brush. So now we're just going to jump in and add some weeds and textures. Some of those I can simply add into the cabin. I can pick at the background. I know I'm going to want more weeds in this area. And I definitely want this background a little darker. So now it's going to be a matter of just mixing up a few different colors of brown and green and trying to get the final pop on this composition. And giving it an overall look, I might decide that as far as the bottom of the boat goes, I want that just a little darker in a few places that might help separate that from the background. Now we could pick at the weeds separately with this round brush and certainly we'll put some of those in. But for some of that foliage, I think I'm going to take that fan brush that I mentioned earlier and take some nice dark green and we're going to just kind of dabble in some leafy areas. And most of that's going to occur up at the top and the corners of the painting. We want the eye to focus on that subject, the boat, and we don't need a lot of extra details in those corners to lead our eye up there, so we're just going to fog that out a little. And the fan brush will come in really handy for doing something similar in the lower corners. But instead of doing foliage, we'll just get that guy to paint some weeds for us. And we'll drag some of those weeds down into the lighter grasses. Just lightly texturize that. And we'll use the flat brush to jump in around the boat and fill in between the tree trunks. And 
And we can just let that drag up into the sky area, to the leafy area. If you're using a rougher textured watercolor paper, or again, this is cold press, which has some texture to it, nothing quite as bad as rough paper. But we can really use that texture for a scene like this. Now with the bulk of this painting filled in, we'll just detail it and try and put these few last minute elements in. I think I want a little more of a golden red series of weeds right in here. I'm using a round brush. This is a number three. It comes to a pretty good point. And it won't hurt at this point to throw in some more branches. That will really add interest and complexity to the background. Sometimes up in the leafy areas like this, we don't have to paint entire branches. We can just put in a few little sprigs here and there. This really isn't the time or the place to do a really super detailed tree. Now with those last minute additions, I'll take just a tiny bit of the yellow ochre that we were using and hit just a couple of the tree trunks with that. And this is a stage where you can spend as much time with the painting as you really like. You can get down and paint lots and lots of weeds and details in it, or you can leave it a little sketchy. But I think this captures the essence of uh, this old worker up for repair. And if I'm happy with it, we'll give it a little signature. And we have a painting that really illustrates that whole concept of uh, negative space. The nice boat really, really jumps out at us. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's demonstration. It's a little different setting for a work boat, but it's kind of fun. Join me again here on Watercolor Workshop on Pack 14. I'm Keith Whitelock.